Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rachachakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders at Great Millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations unto the elect. And I wanted to deal with this topic again, you know, uh, as you can see the title of this video, Demons Survived the Flood and They Are Still Here. All right, which is a, a one of many bugged out doctrines taught by, uh, by Elder Racha of GOCC, okay, which um, he, he's far out, he's bugged out, he, he's uh, dealing with spirits, you know, you can see it all on him, and we believe he's taking a purse um, because uh, he's all over the place and he's teaching this doctrine, you know, that um, demons survived the flood. Now, the scriptures tell you who survived the flood. All right, but then they go into these other books that are bugged out, case in point, the book of Enoch. Now, is there a book of Enoch? Of course there is. All right, there's there's many writings that we don't have. All right, prophets, all right, the, the Nathan, uh, the prophet, Gad, the seer, all of them had books. They're talked about, all right, uh, uh, within the Chronicles and in, in the Kings. It talks about that these particular prophets had books. All right. But the Heavenly Father gave us what we, what we would need. All right. To uh, have faith. He gave us just enough to have faith. And there's so much more we're going to be opened up into. All right. As we get to our final glory, man. And what's that? Going back to our spiritual bodies, man. OK. And not having to deal with the binds of this flesh, which is what centers around this whole lesson. You know, because, you know, dealing with the book of Enoch, I mean, there's many bugged out things in there now when you go into it there's particular uh, uh writings in there that are accurate history but you cannot attribute those writings to enoch because it's bugged out it talks about uh uh, uh one of the angels try to uh, try to be the messiah over over yahweh shai some bugged out stuff like that you have 450 all right uh feet men walking the earth Angels, uh, men, demon, you know, a, a bunch of bugged out things. Now, with, within the book of Enoch, all right, there's particular jotting down of ideas of particular so-called scholars of days. But you cannot attribute these writings to the book of Enoch. You cannot. There, There is no way you can accurately say that these are the, this is the book of Enoch. It's just a book with writings in it and bugged out thoughts uh, of different weirdo uh some rabbis and different weirdo people who just came put a book together ultimately uh, uh gathered up writings and ideas and 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 theories and and you know just you know all types of stuff man that have nothing to do with the holy scriptures man one of the stories say uh uh i believe in in the book of jasher that uh 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 Esau killed Nimrod or Nimrod killed Esau. Some bugged out story like that, man. They weren't even around at the same time. So this dude is far out. Like you see those spaceships on his shirt. Like when you look at him, he belongs on it. Like if there was a UFO, <laughs> he would need, he needs to be stopped. This, the, this is the scripture that when it talks about whose mouths must be stopped. All right. Mind you, this is the same guy who did what? took Israelites to Egypt on some flea Babylon kick, you know, took a bunch of Israelites to Egypt to somewhere in the Middle East and then left them and came here. Where, where is he at right now? You see, where is he? Now, let, let us have done something like that. You know, we'd be the worst thing going, but that, that type of stuff is just swept under the rug in Israel. Took a bunch of Israelites over to Egypt Talking about flee Babylon, which that ain't even what that scripture is talking about. And we have lessons on that. Lord willing, I'll repost a lesson on that, man. So anyway, when you uh, listen to this video, um, let's just listen to it. And then I want to get into, you know, this doctrine that he's teaching. Let's, let's listen to him. Academy is is very cheap. Okay, we never went up in price. Seventy-five dollars for the enrollment for the first month. The second month, you pay seventy-five. And I'm. <laughs> well, damn! You couldn't go from seventy-five to forty-five. 
Well, that's the big deal. The one month you pay $75 and the next month you pay $75, nigga. Then he blink and, and, and see them women are all bugged out over there look, looking at, oh, my God, Ellen you're a singer. You remind me of Johnny Gill. You see? And he, he's over there getting, because uh, he's a, this dude's a freak. He committed adultery before. Dude confronted him on camera about it. We could, the video's on YouTube. All right? He, he, he walked off. He didn't want to deal with it. So this dude has a, a history of, of, of uh, you know, uh, uh, weirdoism, I'll say the least, to say the least. He's a, he's a bit all over the place. He's a character. He's a slick talker. He's a slick talker, man. And see, this is what the scriptures talks about, laying captive silly women. Let's get that real quick. <laughs> silly women. Second Timothy 3 and 6, for of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins. Just a bunch of perverseness, man. Led always with diverse lust, man. And you, you got a lot of Israelites that that uh, use the word, you know, for worldly uh, uh, status and money. <laughs> Is what people are out there saying. Look at him. Bury with him in baptism. So don't forget, when we go into the water, we're buried with Christ. And yet we're still arguing at each other over minute doctrinal points when Christ gave the principles as clear as day in the Bible that there were angels that sinned in the beginning. All right, now right there he's saying angels sinned in the beginning. Okay. In the heavens, they sinned in the heavens. OK, this is his doctrine. And they were uh, wandered down to earth. Now, to, to the first point we're going to get on this thought is that, you know, there is no angel in the heavens rebelling against the most high. There is no war in heaven to where the most high in the, in the heaven, the angels are uh, 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 outside of the control of the most high. And how do we know that? Well, he's omnipotent omnipotent all powerful nothing is with uh, within the scriptures that we believe in nothing is outside of his his uh, uh uh control you see so this is revelation 19 and 6 and i heard as it were a great a voice of a multitude and the voice of many waters and a voice of the mighty thunder and saying hallelujah all right. It says, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. The Lord God om om omnipotent reigneth. Let's look up the word omnipotent. Okay. As a matter of fact, we can I'm tripping. We can look it up in the Greek. Give me one second. So omnipotent. Give me one second. The hell? This is new. Omnipotence means what? The quality of having unlimited or very great power. Unlimited power, very great power. Nothing is above your power. <laughs> you see? And to wrap your mind around that, being just mortal flesh, it's hard to do. All right? However, he is. So he's omnipotent. Let's look it up in the Greek. There's no angel in the heavens not being obedient to the Most High. The war in heaven in the book of Revelation, the 12th chapter is speaking of war as when Yahawashah returns, the dragon, which is the revival of the ancient Roman Empire that will be in rulership at the time of Yahawashah's return, Babylon the Great, NATO and the EU, they're going to fight the second coming of the Lord along with these other nations as they are warned with themselves. That's all described in prophecy. Second Edges 13 and, and other scriptures. Right. So. Omnipotent. Is what? Pantocrator. All right. It says 
one who, who holds sway over all things, ruler of all. One who holds sway over all things. All right. Almighty. So there is no angel that operates outside of what the most high wants, whether it be a evil or a, a good angel. They all work within his balance. The Lord is not a false balance. What does he say? I form the light. I create darkness. I make peace. I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And he is the director through his word of what we know as reality. <laughs> All right. In this flesh. Now, going back to this, 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 this guy here. And this is that uncle and he, you think he's doing good. And then you'll find out later on down the line, he was on crack. Not saying he's on crack, but I'm just saying he, he just got, you know, that leather coat, Jake. Just come around smiling and, 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 and then, you you know, every time you hear about him, it's just. <laughs> See, now if you're looking at this and saying, well, let's talk about Israel. Let me go to a precept to show you angel means people. Well, well wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. The, the, the scriptures describe. When you go to the word angels, let's get it. All right, let's get well, the, the, the whole, the scripture surrounding this whole thing. Okay. Now, this is the book of Jude. All right. And it's verse six. All right. Now, so we can get the context of what's being said here in Jude. What he's, what he's speaking to the church about is putting them in mind. All right. The warnings of history to the ungodly. All right. The, the, there's an ungodly generation that has always been a thorn. All right. In, in the side of our nation through their rebellion. And we rebelled before. You see. So he's putting them in remembrance of the ones who bucked up against, you know, Moses and Aaron in the in the in the wilderness. OK, he was speaking of particular men in the church at that time that were coming amongst the apostles, getting breakdowns and then leaving and acting like they started the truth and starting their own thing. And the same thing that you see happening now. So Jude in, in this chapter is is giving. OK, uh, uh, writing unto the church that they would have to contend for the faith. And he said, for there are certain men crept in underwears, just it's just putting Putting you in remembrance right here. I will therefore put you in remembrance. Verse five, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed them that believe not. So he's, he's speaking of Jake's rebellion. OK, the history of how Jake rebelled in Egypt. All right. And then he jumps immediately and he says the angels which kept not their first estate. But left their own habitation, hath he reserved and chains under darkness into the judgment of the great day. All right. And we're going to break all of this down. OK, because the, the, the chains of darkness is this flesh. Why is that? Because ultimately, when you get wisdom of Solomon, the second chapter in the 23rd verse, it says God created man to be immortal. And made him an image all right, to be an image of his own eternity. Speaking of Adam, okay, through uh, 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 Seth, because Abel was slew, all the way up, Enoch, Noah, Shem, Arphaxad, you know, on down the line, Peleg, Eber, which is Hebrew, all right, when you go up to Terah, uh, Abraham's father, who was an idol worshiper, the Lord uh, 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 wakes up his son, Abraham, and, and makes a promise through him. So he made that lineage, that line to be immortal. Now, what is immortal? Let's get this uh, real quick. What is immortal? Something that's not sub subject to death. So we were created. The Lord created us. The, the, his intention for us is to be immortal. Okay. Immortal is. Living forever, never dying or decaying. 
our mortal bodies are inhabited by immortal souls. All right. And the soul, the spirit is all right. Immortal. All right. But it's subject to this flesh. Which is what has separated us from our power. Undying, deathless. OK, so the most high created. This particular, the sons of God under the son of God, Yahweh shot to be immortal. All right. In the image of his own eternity. That's what his intention was. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world and they that do hold of his side do find it. OK, so because of disobedience came what? Decay, death. All right, where well, we had to be subject to this flesh. OK. <laughs> and the, 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 the spirit, OK, is contrary to the flesh and the flesh is contrary to the spirit. All right. But the flesh puts you in bondage, okay, and it kills you by the law. You see, so the, 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 this body, this flesh is, is, is like a, a, a prison. <laughs> it keeps you in a perpetual state of decay, in re, uh, points of rebellion, and condemnation. So through Yahweh we have grace <laughs> where we can be brought into that perfection under his perfect sacrifice man so he created us to be Im immortal but due to death all right due, due due to rebellion came death and decay man and oh boy have we taken hold of death okay so going back here okay he said the angels jude 1 and 6 the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation hath he reserved in everlasting chains of darkness, which is this flesh unto the judgment of the great day. And, and we're living in a time where a where the, where the great day judgment of the Lord is coming, where the elect are promised to be upgraded into those new bodies. <laughs> you see, to re re return to their original glory. Now, this word angel Let's get this real quick. This word angel, angelos, okay, a messenger, an envoy, one who is sent, an angel, as a messenger from the Most High, okay? So sometimes when you see, okay, uh, 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 angel, okay, sometimes it could be talking about an angel, all right, in, in the heavens, Sometimes it could be an angel manifested himself as a as a human being on earth. OK, or it can be simply one whom the heavenly father. All right. Uh, 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 have have has bestowed love upon uh, and, and sent him to tell the world a message. So he's a messenger from the most high, a messenger. And there are points in the scriptures where Israelites Okay, are likened unto what? Angels. Let's get it real quick. This is the book of, let's see here. Let's see here. Let me rough it up like this. All right, this is um, Matthew 11. And see, he's speaking of John the Baptist, right? He's speaking of John the Baptist. Yahweh Shah's tribute to John. Now, when he speaks of John the Baptist, you know, he's, he's asking him, what did they come to see? He said, but what went ye out to see? A prophet, I say unto you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Now, this word messenger, okay, is what? Angelos angel okay now when you deal with what that means yes there is a heavenly origin to the sons of the most high okay the thing is those spirits eventually came down and had to inhabit flesh and that's where decay and separation from our power and rebellion came into play all right <laughs> and it's and, and it's and it's a prison it's like it's really a chain of this flesh it's, it's really a, a 
it's a disadvantage. Okay, it keeps you at a disadvantage, man. You know, and we long for the day where we can just be perfect and at one with our power, man, and just be. His name means Yahweh. Ultimately, we're supposed to just be, operate, you know, dominate, rule, judge. Okay, but this 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 flesh has separated us from that 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 glory. So an angel can be a messenger. Also, in the book of Second Edras, chapter one. Okay, and thirty nine, unto whom I will give for leaders Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Hosea, and Amos, and uh, Micah. All right, uh, uh, and Joel, and Obadiah, and Jonah. And Nahum, and Habakkuk, and Zephaniah, and Haggai, and Zechariah, and Malachi, which is called also the angel of the Lord. So Malachi was <laughs> a man who came onto the earth and prophesied. He cursed out the priest, okay? And ultimately, he was known as what? When you read his book, read it, okay? Uh, uh, it's in his book. Uh, that you know um uh, uh uh Elijah the prophet has promised to come before the the destruction came it's in his book that that's prophesied man <laughs> all right so he he's known as what the angel of the lord so because you see the word angel in this whole thing doesn't doesn't necessarily mean all right, it's speaking of angels in the heavens. However, when you deal with the sons of God, as it says here in Psalms, the 82nd chapter, in the fifth verse, all right, let's read it. It says, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness and the, all the foundations of the earth are out of course because the, the sons of God are not ruling. They're not in their perfection. Therefore, everything is out of course because the true original judges that the Most High ordained to rule are in a low state in the earth. Therefore, heathens are ruling, brute beast. It says, I have said ye are gods. And all of you are the children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Let's read that in the NLT. Let's read that in the NLT. You see that? He said, I say ye are God, ye are all the children of the Most High, speaking of the Israelites, but ye will die like mere mortals. All right? Now, what is a mortal? We just, we looked up immortal. What is a mortal? Okay? We looked up uh, immortal. Uh, a mortal is a living Human being often contrast to divine being subject to death. All right. Fleshly, earthly, bodily. You see. So we are gods. We are the, 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 the Allah Hayim, All right. When you get Genesis, the first chapter. All right. As we'll read, the, the Lord established an order. He established a rank. He established a. Uh, 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 followers all right through his image through his son all right from the foundation of the earth however when those spirits came to the earth we failed even uh, uh the top spirit all right yahweh shai as he came to the earth as adam he failed as he came to the earth as solomon he failed but when he came as yahweh shai he got it right and through him getting it right we now got a chance through grace to get it right <laughs> You see, to get back to that heavenly estate. And that's what it's all about. We're tired of this flesh. Okay? And fall like any other ruler. See, we're, see the, this is what we're subject to. Death. That's the, 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 uh, uh, the nail in the coffin, so to speak. That's where we, there is no way we can win. <laughs> you see? So we're, we're, we're in bondage crying, Abba, Father, please help us, deliver us. So the sons of God eventually came to the earth. And what happened? They, 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 they fell. 
And that's what his word goes back to. All right. You shall fall like the men. Right. You shall die and fall like one of the princes. This word fall. Is what? Nepal. To fall, to fall. All right. To to fall out. To be inferior, to, to prostate, to fall. OK. A portion by lot to prostrate oneself to fall. And when you go to the, the book of Genesis, ironically, let's see here, Genesis, the sixth chapter, okay, and we can start at one, okay, because the, the prior chapter gives you the lineage of Adam through Seth. Chapter four gives the lineage of Adam uh, uh, through Cain. OK, so it was established the, the, the sons of God. Then you had the other nations that were around the sons of uh, men. And then you have the sons of the wicked. Which were the sons of Cain at that time. All right. And that spirit is back through Esau. Now. The next chapter after it, it, it clearly gives you, you know, the. uh generations of, of of adam through seth the sons of god okay uh the very next chapter it goes into what the corruption of mankind because what happened we know that adam all right as a result of the sin of uh eve ate the fruit so what happened they fell so eventually when you get into genesis the sixth chapter is giving you a breakdown of that fall happening amongst the descendants of Adam. Okay, as a matter of fact, um, this is a uh, second Edris, the uh, third chapter. Let's see, second Edris three. All right, it says, um, It went from Adam, then it goes to Noah. Verse 8, it says, And every people walked after their own will and did wonderful things before thee and despised thy commandments. And in the process of time, thou broughtest the flood upon those that dwelt in the world. Okay, and it came to pass, as in of them, as death was to Adam, so was the flood unto thee. So, when you read Genesis, the sixth chapter is giving you an insight into, uh, you know, the, the death, you know, rebellion, sin, the flesh, you know, decay, the sons of God being subject to the to the elements and and being separated from their power and, and, and being, you know, in bondage to these chains of darkness. OK, so as uh, death was unto Adam, so was the flood unto these. All right. Nevertheless, one of them thou left this name, namely Noah, with his household of whom came all righteous men. All right. And it will be through Shem. So when you read Genesis, the sixth chapter. It's speaking of the corruption of the sons of Adam, the sons of God. OK, the, 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 the how they became corrupt. Ultimately, you would call them the Gentiles of their time. As this is a uh, process that has that which is then is now we've constantly rebelled against the natural order or the, 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 the way. All right. And what's kept us from perfection is the flesh. These chains of darkness. So and it came to pass as when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them. OK, and remember, you had the family line of Cain still around. So it could have been Cain's daughters. OK, it could have been just the other heathen uh, nations that were around about. But remember, Adam and the sons of God were given an instruction. What was that instruction to 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 uh, uh, govern, to, to be in order, to judge? OK, to to keep the garden. All right. The earth. OK, uh, uh, in a sense, in a sense of paradise, all right, ruling, showing the heathen how to how to live, you know, and just ultimately setting up paradise on earth. But since sin came. 
All right. Now you see this rebellion, you know, this constant state of falling. All right. It says that the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose, meaning they started marrying in with the heathen nations. OK, and we have a history of doing that, marrying in with the heathen nation. And what would we do? We would join unto their gods. We would take unto their customs. All right. We've done this numerous times as the chosen seed of the most high. The sons of God are ultimately the descendants of Adam. OK, who ultimately came onto the earth. All right. And they were they, they fell from their grace. All right. And what does the Lord say? And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man. Now, these are the days that led to the flood. So it was wickedness going on, rebellion, idol worship. OK, uh, madness. The sons of God got into all manner of wicked practices. So what did the Lord say? My spirit shall not always thrive with man. And Solomon is an example of what bowing to those different gods and, and, and dealing and falling to those women could do. So imagine what the sons of God were doing at this time before the Lord sent the flood. The Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with men for that he is also flesh. See, he is flesh. OK, this was not dealing with angels. See that? So this is the story they're taking to create this bugged out doctrine. Now, when you get first Corinthians the uh, 15th chapter, I'll just hit straight to the point. It says there are celestial bodies, okay, which are bodies in the heavens, heavenly bodies, and bodies terrestrial, all right, which are flesh bodies, subject to death, decay. But the glory of the celestial is one, the glory of the heavenly body is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. See, we here in these terrestrial bodies, we produce seed, okay? We have orgasms, okay? We have to eat food. We have to drink water. The, the, the spiritual body is not subject to that. The, the spiritual body is not in the heaven starving, okay? They're, they're, they're at one. They're, they're, they're good. You see? Pure energy. And however that is in the heavens, we'll see, all right? But... We do get uh, uh, glimpses of it through particular scriptures. Everything's in order, clean. You see, and, and, and spirits don't sin. Whether it's a righteous or a wicked spirit, they don't sin. See, the flesh is with sin. So there's a glory to the, uh, the, 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 the uh, celestial body. Okay, because, you know, whether it's a righteous or it's a wicked spirit, it's the will of the Lord. It's his command. It's his order. See? They, they just do the bidding of the Lord. And, and, and it's, no, it's, it's not even a thought. It's just, it's just, you know? They're ready to do his, his bidding at any time to get things done. So then you have the glory of the terrestrial, all right? Uh, <laughs> we come here. We, 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 we you know, we... we uh, you know, fine women we reproduce. That's the glory of the terrestrial. Okay, we have to shit. We have to do all of these various different things and, you know, wash our bodies. And, you know, the, 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 the spiritual body doesn't have to worry about that in the heavens. So they, they each has its own glory and the Lord didn't intend for them to be mixed. Okay, when you read Genesis, the sixth chapter, this is not talking about no dang angels, man. Okay? <laughs> he said, his spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is flesh. See, this flesh is what separates us from the Father. This is that chain of darkness. Yet this day, all right, shall be 120 years. Okay? And Noah was preaching. It says... There were giants in the earth in those days. So this is where they, they bug out. Now, in the book of Enoch, it talks about 
five hundred foot men, you know, walking on the earth mixed with an angel and you know the Nephilim and all of this weirdo bugged out. No, the, the, when it said they were giants in the earth in those days, what did we just read in Psalms eighty two? The 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 fallen ones. Okay, so we 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 have various breakdowns on this, but we'll do it real quick. This word giants is na pa y'all giants nephilim all right but when you go to the root word all right nepal it's what to fall the fallen ones the one who failed they they fell short they were the sinners of their day okay dealing with the with the flesh in the way that they dealt with it okay it happened the the, the same thing happened Various times uh, uh, dealing with Israel amongst the, the Canaanites, the, you know, the, the Egyptians. We always, you know, bow to their gods and fail to fall away. We, we, we fell from our glories. And it all goes back to Adam real quick. Second Edra 7. Second Edra, the seventh chapter. In the 48 verse, it says, O Adam, what hast thou done? For though it was thou that sinned, thou art not fallen alone, but we all that come of thee. So the fallen ones, okay, are, are, are the sons of God who at that time fell, all right? They fell away, okay? And that that's the same word that we find in Psalms, the 82nd chapter. Napayal, Nepal, all right? Uh, uh, to fall that's what that word giants mean but it goes right back to the scripture psalms 82 and 6 i have said ye are gods all of you are the children of the most high but ye shall die like men and shall fall like the princes when you go to that word fall like the princes all right it's nepal all right which is the root root word of not by y'all and that's where you get that nephilim doctrine all right, the Nephilim are ultimately the sons of God who fell from their grace. All right, they came into the daughters of men. Okay, they started to sup with their gods. They made, you know, covenants and, 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 and you know the lewdness that follows with the sons of God, the children of Israel. Once they start marrying amongst these other heathen and, and, and bowing to their gods, they it, it felt nothing but filth follows. So... It says, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them. See? So what he's saying is that, and we're going to let him talk a little bit more too. He's saying that, that ultimately the sons of God, the, the fallen angels came down to the earth and had sex with, with women and had children. You see what I'm saying? See, they took that whole giant thing and made a whole crazy doctrine. Now, this thing giant, real quick, let's go to the Apocrypha. Okay, this is uh, Sirach, the 16th chapter. Let's see here. And the sixth verse, it says, I start at five. It says, many things have I seen with mine eyes and my ear have heard greater things than these. In the congregation of the ungodly shall a fire be kindled and in a rebellious nation wrath is set on fire. And who's that rebellious nation? Israel, man. OK, we've always been rebellious. He was not pacified towards the old giants who fell away in the strength of their foolishness. So they 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 fell away. Now, when you go and tie this to the, the, the book, let's go back to Genesis 6. Okay, the, there were giants in the earth in those days, the fallen ones. All right. After that, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, they bare children to them. The same became mighty men, which were of old. Jake mingled with the heathen and had children. Okay, which issued forth from them. All right, teaching them that rebellion. They were mighty men. 
as it says here in the book of uh, Baruch 3 and 26, there were giants famous from the beginning that were so great stature and so experts in war and stature. I mean, we, we were stout. We were, we, we were, yeah, we were bigger. All right. But we weren't no damn 400 and something feet tall, man. That doesn't make any sense. Come on, bro. Sheesh. God damn, bro. At least give me 40 feet. Goodness gracious. <laughs> this dude said, this dude said 450 feet. Now imagine that. No, man. It's speaking of the, the, the famous ones, the, the, the sons of God, man. And we're the greatest. We're even unto this day, we're so great of stature and experts in war and combat and these different sports Esau set up, man. So the, the sons of God went off. Okay? And what did the Lord say? And God saw the wickedness of man. See, the wickedness is, was man. It wasn't, all right, uh, 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 angels that came down, okay, and, and had sex with women. No, let's listen to him some more. This nigga is crazy. Look at him. He know he fit a lie. The gates of hell. Who was bound in hell? The fallen ones. Judgment of the great day. So not just man is going to be judged. In the gates of hell, when you read that, you know, Yahawashai told Peter, unto you I give the key and the gates of hell, okay, shall not prevail against you. M meaning Esau, <laughs> all right, in his system, when they come with great wrath, they're not going to prevail against the, the tabernacles of David. They're going to be overcome. You see, it's not talking about no damn spiritual demon, Satan. OK, on the planet Earth, running at, at Peter, man. No. He was basically saying the gates of hell. All right. Anything they come with, the, 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 the hottest of fire is not going to overcome. This church, I established my my uh, my my rock right here on you, David, Peter. See that? So this dude don't he don't know the scriptures, man. And he's a very manipulative, conniving. You know, he, he and this guy here. You know, he he's like that dude Walter from uh, Get Out. You know, you've seen that movie that dude Walter, the dude with the 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 uh, the, the green hat, I believe, <laughs> running. <laughs> Let me stop, man. What's down there? The disobedient, starting with the angels who left their first habitation. So the the the, the angels that left their first habitation are down in hell. All right, but then this. They're the ones who came to earth and taught mankind technology. So they came to the earth and taught mankind technology. What is wrong with this guy? That's what he got from what we just read in Genesis, the sixth chapter. That would have man reverence them as gods above our God. The heathen nations did that with just mere idols, man. Okay? They they created idols and made men bow to them. They made men bow to them as gods. The Romans did it. Various different uh, 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 cultures did it. They, you would bow to the ruler as God <laughs> on earth. <laughs> Come on, man. This dude is far out, man. Thunder and stars. Stars are angels, folks. They wandered down to earth and now they're judged. In the in it, they're, they're bound in the <laughs> earth until Christ returns. They're bound in the earth. So are they they they're first they were in hell. 
but now they're bound in the earth until Christ returns. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam. And Enoch also, when you go into to the breakdown, it shows you that eight people lived through the flood. But the other things that came down were able to survive. So eight people survived the flood, which we know that's in the Bible. But he said there were other entities bound in the earth who survived. This dude is crazy. And anybody who follows him, you, you're even more crazy. So the most high Genesis six and five saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Man was being wicked. The sons of God were just the chosen lineage amongst the nations, just as we are today doing the same damn thing as we've always done. What, what, what is the history of Israel? We, we uh, uh, Psalms 106. Okay, Psalms 106. And <laughs> Psalms 106 and 27 to overthrow their seed among the nations and to scatter them in the islands in the lands. They join themselves to Baal Peor, the God of the open and the freaky God. Okay. The boys dressing like girls, the girls dressing like boys, loot, the lewdness. Uh, and, and Jake has all of those things in their culture now. It says, and ate the sacrifices of the dead. Okay. Thus they provoked him to anger with their inventions and the plague break. All right. And upon them. And when you keep going down, it's talking about Israel. All right, Psalms 106 and 35, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works and served their idols, which were a snare unto them. That's what happened to the sons of God in this day. All right, but we have various examples of that happening to the Israelites as well. Even unto this day, it's the same story. We've we fell from the way of righteousness. So when you go here to the book of Jude one and six. OK, and that dude's crazy. And the angels, which kept not their first estate. All right. Now, when you go to the word estate, now we know angels. Sometimes it could be talking about the angels in the heaven. Sometimes it could be talking about uh, angels manifesting themselves. Sometimes it could be talking about regular people with a message. All right. Now, we do know that the 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 Israelites, the chosen people, have a heavenly order before all. Okay? Now, when you go to this word first estate, okay, the word estate is arca, arche. Okay? It says beginning, origin, persons or thing that uh, uh, commences the first thing in a series, the leader, that by which anything begins, the origin. Okay? Principalities magistry okay and what is magistry okay rule okay you got the uh the authority officer or authority now when you go to genesis the first chapter real quick genesis the first chapter it says in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth now we know when you go into the hebrew this word God is Allah Hayim. rulers, judges, divine ones, angels. So from the beginning, the Lord is showing you his order. All right. And when you put precept upon precept, you find out it's a church. It's a, it's in a heavenly assembly. And at the head of it is his son. Hamashiach, Yahawashai. Works or special possessions of God. All right. Divine ones, the rulers. OK, so the, in the beginning, which the beginning is what? OK, Ra'ash Yath, Ra'ash Yath. Beginning, best, chief, choice part. 
Okay, so the Lord is showing you the first fruits in the heavens, Ra'ash, the head, the top, the summit, the upper, the upper part, the chief of, na of, of, of a family, a nation, priest, a priesthood. All right, so the Lord is from the foundation of the earth. He's showing you his priesthood, his order. Okay, and the Alahayim were in perfect order that the uh, Most High, you know, uh, programmed them to be creating the heavens and the earth. All of these different things we we read about, it was the Alahayim through the blueprint the Most High gave them creating these things. Let's go to the book of Hebrews 12 and 22. But ye are come unto Mount Sion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly of the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. All right. And the church of the firstborn, when you get that word firstborn, okay, firstborn is protokos, firstborn, all right, the firstborn of all creation. So there, there's, there's spirits. As we, are, we can go into various scriptures that are chosen from the foundation of the earth, all right, to be blameless, all right? They were chosen from the foundation of the earth as a spiritual family in the heavens, all right, which eventually they would come to the earth to rule. And what did we do? We failed, starting at Adam, okay? This is uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and 13, but we are bound to always give thanks to you, all right, uh, uh, for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chose you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. So now in these, you know, decrepit bodies where we're subject to death, you know, we, we have a way back through, you know, being justified from the foundation of the earth from the beginning. All right. However, we we were to come to the planet Earth and be in a particular order and we fail, which is why we're in this decrepit state, man. So, yeah, we understand that there is a firstborn church. All right. There are the Allah the Bible speak of. OK, the sons of God in a heavenly state, because even when you see the word sons of God, it can be speaking of an angel. It, 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 it talked of a. Uh, 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 Yahweh, it, it spoke of Yahweh Shai as the son of God. You have, uh, uh, if you're obedient and believe on him, you're likened unto a son of God. Okay, there's various uses of this, the son of God. Okay, and we understand that there is a heavenly order that it started with, but eventually it came to the earth. And this that's where we fell. Okay, and what was the fall? Ultimately, we became subject to death. So when you go back to the book of Jude, okay, let's go to Jude. Jude, the first chapter, as he's warning Jake about, okay, uh, uh, this, you know, what rebellion has always led to and how we're going to have to deal with niggas. He simply just brings up the history that they all know of, of the sons of God, which kept not their first estate. OK, now, after we read everything we read, let's read the word estate again. The angels which kept not their first estate. R.K. Origin. All right. Uh, magistry rule because what was the Alahayim to rule the judges, right? The counselors, the you know the the rulers. You know Adam was ultimately in in you know through Eve they were supposed to form a legacy, the sons of God that were to rule on the planet Earth. Okay, and be in full obedience to the way of righteousness, which will, which will lead to paradise. So they left off. They came down to the planet Earth and in bodies through the seed of men. And what happened? We eventually fell after we received the order through Adam, the priesthood, everything. We fell and we've constantly failed. We, we fell even harder 
when we uh, uh, received the contract on stone through Moses. You know, that, oh my goodness. You know, the flesh was used as a weapon within that contract to constantly keep us in a state of rebellion. It's an enemy. It's a, it's a prison, man. So they left off from the order that the Heavenly Father gave them. And that's ultimately what we as Israelites do, all right, when we broke the, the covenant, we broke the laws. It says, but left their own habitation. So the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. Okay, the word habitation is what? Strong's G, 3613, like a tadion, like a tadion. A dwelling place. Now, what is the purpose of the temple? The purpose of the temple is that the Heavenly Father dwells in it. All right. And when you when you read the scriptures. It constantly talks about. The Lord. Dwelling in Israel, man. That was the whole purpose of the temple. OK, the tabernacle that Moses built, it was a, a, a place where he would dwell among the children of Israel. OK, he couldn't fully dwell in us because ultimately of this flesh. All right. But under the new covenant, we're going to have new bodies where he gonna, he's going to he's going to dwell literally in us. And that's the end goal. OK, but this flesh has what a, a, a allowed, you know, situations where the Lord had to turn his face. He wasn't dwelling with us. OK, and we fell and I heard a great voice, Revelation 21 and three out of heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of the most high is with men. All right, it's gonna, we're going to be the temple and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be their God. See that he will dwell with them. See, that's what it was all about. Leviticus 26 and 11, I will set my tabernacle among you and my soul shall not abhor you and I will walk among you and be your God and ye shall be my people. Meaning he would dwell, he would be with you through what that tabernacle. That tabernacle is what allowed the Lord to have a, a relationship with you because you were so, you know, he 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 didn't deal directly with you. You know, he had to set up a tabernacle. But under this new covenant, we now have a way where you know we're gonna ultimately have the the same order Yahweh Shah has returned to. We're gonna all return to it under Him. So, the dwelling place, the habitation that the sons of God, the angels left from is what? The, the, the dwelling place. All right. They left their own habitation. They, they left from dwelling with the most high. They left off from the natural order, the way. See here. Second Corinthians five and two for in this meaning in this flesh, we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven all right and then the bodies in the heaven we have uh, there we we're in direct you know uh, uh unisense you know with the most high through yahweh shai in our in our heavenly estate to where we don't have to deal with the flesh meaning we're obedient angels are obedient man see and the thing is the lord is going to allow us to rule on earth in those bodies this time which is something we've never been able to do. We've always ruled and been, 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 been bound in these chains of darkness. So the habitation, okay, that the sons of God left was ultimately we had to come down in the earth in sin and go off. You see, we came down onto the earth. And we left from our rank. We left from our order and gave it up for these lesser cultures and ways, man. The same thing we've always done, man. And have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness into the judgment of the great day. And the chains of darkness is the flesh. Let's look up the word chains. Okay. 
everlasting chains. And it's no way out of them. <laughs> but through that straight gate, Desmond, a band or a bond. All right. Like what? Prison. See, we're in subject to these bodies, man. Deho. OK, it says to bind. And what, what, what are we bound in? The spirits and flesh. Fasten. All right. To bind with, with fasten with chains into chains. All right. To bind, to put under obligation of the law. All right. And we have an obligation as the sons of God to do what's right, to to be upstanding. However, we're given uh, uh, this flesh. OK, that ultimately uses the law to condemn us. And it's led to a perpetual fall. And we need out of this flesh more than you could think. We're, we're in prison on the earth, but then w within the earth, we're in a whole nother prison in this flesh. And see, that's why the scriptures say, Yahweh Shai. Okay, Yahweh Shai. Let's get this real quick. Ephesians, the fourth chapter. The scriptures say, Yahweh Shai led captivity captive. Let's get that. Ephesians 4. And eight, wherefore he said, when he ascended up on high, all right, when he came onto the earth, okay, and, and became a sacrifice and then ascended back on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Because now, as he's up there, all right, he's, he's able to send us down the Holy Spirit and we dwell with the Most High while we're in this flesh. We do the, the most high dwells with us through Yahweh Shai, through the Holy Spirit. To you know, and it, and it, and to while while we're in this decrepit flesh, which is great. That's mercy. That's that's a grace. That's a gift <laughs> to where we could be justified and, and and get through all of this hell that's coming to this earth, man, and ultimately be brought back to our perfection. So when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. So the captivity is ultimately this flesh. You see, that's why it says in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Second Corinthians four and six for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Have shined in our hearts, our minds to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of the most high in the face of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. See, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. That the excellency of the power may be of the most high and not of us. So we're we're in these earthen vessels, this flesh. Where we're, we're, we're bound all right, we're bound, all right, in affliction, in iron. Going back to the book of Job, or uh, uh, Salakia, the book of um, Jude, that word for uh, chains, chains of darkness, deho, okay, uh, to, to forbid, to prohibit, to declare, to be illicit. Now, what is illicit? Illicit is what? Forbidden by law. So the flesh keeps us in a state where we're ultimately forbidden by the law. We're unlawful, which means we, 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 need, we need mercy. <laughs> Outlaw, this flesh, it prohibits you. It, 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 it fastens you. Unto a relationship with death. Okay. So that's the punishment for the sons of God. Which yes the sons of God started in the heavens. Came onto the earth through the son of God Adam. And we fell. So now we have to deal with this perpetual. Okay battle. With, with, with death. 
we can't reach back unto that original glory but through Yahweh Shai, man. He cut us off from that, and the flesh made sure of it. This is Psalms 107 and 10. Such as sit in darkness and in the shadow of death. All right, and we're in the shadow of death. Being bound in affliction and iron. Okay, and this is hell, man. That's the, 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 the we're, we're in a lower state. We, we are gods, but we're going to die just like the rest of the princes, man. And, and fall from our, our, our heavenly order. We're going to fall from that prestige, you know, that, you know, that, that legacy. We fell from it because they rebelled against the words of God and contemned the, the counsel of the Most High. So when you read Genesis, the sixth chapter, that is just your rebellion of the Most High of that day. The word rebellion is marah. And it's we, that that word is used many times to describe Israel rebelling against the Lord. It's the the, the whole the, the the Jake just constantly there was always rebellion. And what did that stem from? Sin, you know, being disobedient. So it should be clear to you. Okay. Isaiah, uh, 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 you know, we'll get a few other scriptures, but it should be clear to you, all right, here in Jude 1 and 6, and the angels, as he's talking about Jake rebelling in Egypt, you see, rebelling in Egypt, the angels that kept not their first estate but left their own habitation hath he reserved unto everlasting chains of darkness unto the great day of judgment. And we're coming into that day where we, we're going to be ushered back into those heavenly bodies, man. After we, we fulfill our sacrifice. Jude 1 and 7, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in like manner going themselves over to fornication, going after strange flesh. So what, what do you think the sons of God were doing at this time? They were there. You think Lot was the only of his family line? <laughs> okay, of his father, you know, of his uh, father's uh, uh, brother Abraham, the sons of God. You think he was the uh, only one there? You know, Jake was there. But the whole vibe was what? Off rebellion and it led to judgment. And that's the time we're living in now. So when you read Genesis, it's ultimately just the rebellion of the most high of that time. It calls them angels because they were what? The, the, the messengers of the most high. Remember, we have a legacy going back to Seth. Genesis 4 and 26 into uh, this is when. Abel was slew, but Seth was born. And to Seth also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. All right, so the, 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 there was a proclamation, you know, the, uh, uh, a preaching, all right, a, a prophesying, the, 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 the uh, testifying of the Most High, the, the, the preaching. It would be through this line. So when you read by Genesis, the sixth chapter. Amongst Noah's generation, they fell. From these instructions, they fell from calling on the name of the Lord. They fell from calling on Yahweh. You see that. Through the instruction gave to them through Adam. Because that's who the Most High breathed that breath into. Seth, we were blessed with him as a compensation to restore that breath, that legacy. All right. And what happened from that? Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord, man. Then Enoch, okay, Noah, you know, Shem. So that's all that this is talking about in Genesis, the uh, sixth chapter. That's what Jude is going into here okay 
the 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 angels who you know the the Israelites, the sons of God. Okay, he he reserved them unto the chains of darkness, and now we're we 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 have a way out of this darkness through Yahweh Shah Isaiah forty two and seven to open the blind eyes to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and to them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. What is the prison house? This flesh, we sit in darkness in a, in a low state in the earth. We're, 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 we're literally serving out of a, a sentence to where we have to worry, <laughs> you know, but, but, but the, these, the, this is the condition of the battle. And the thing is, you can't be overcome by the flesh. How was I was tempted, but did he over, did, was he overcome by temptation? No. And that's ultimately the, the, uh, walk we have to go through in this flesh as we give our sacrifice so the, the this is the prison house this flesh okay <laughs> romans 7 and 5 for when we are in the flesh the motions of sins which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death it is a it is a binding of 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 you just a failure you see so this this doctrine isaiah 61 and 1 the spirit of the lord god is upon me because the lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek he have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to proclaim liberty to the captives in the opening of the prison of them that are bound and and and, and liberty Freedom, you know, ultimately through Yahweh Shai, freedom from that first covenant in a grace period to where we can be brought back to perfection as long as we stay uh, 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 loyal and faithful, man. So even here in Second Peter 2 and 4, it says, for if God, and, and, and what, what are they going into here? The rise of false prophets. Heresies, pernicious ways, people going off. And then all of a sudden, as he jumps in verse four, what does he say? Peter, for if God spared not the angels that sinned. Now, how does an angel sin in the heavens when he's, you know, there's nothing rebelling against his way in the heavens, man. OK, the commandments was given unto us because what is the law for? Uh, 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 the thieves, disobedient, wicked people, right? According to the uh, the book of Timothy, it's a, a guidebook to say, okay, I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that. Why? Because of your flesh. Second Peter's two and four: For if God spared not the angels that sin, but cast them down to hell. And delivered them into the chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Okay. Now, hell, when you go into the scriptures, can be many things. Okay. Isaiah 5 and 13. Therefore, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. And their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. Okay. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoices it shall descend into it. So our the mighty men, our pomp. OK. At this time. All right. You know, the rejoicing of, of our nation will be brought to hell. Hell would swallow us up. You see, there's there's various cases in the scriptures where hell is just used to describe a bad situation. All right, you being in a, in a, in, a, in a messed up situation, man. Whether it be judgment, heathen coming against you, you lost everything. Okay, death all around you. That that can be likened unto hell. It's many times in the scriptures. So casting them down to hell, meaning we we fell to a lower state. Subject unto the heathen. Okay. 
everything would go left, man. And spared not the old world, but saved Noah. We read about what happened and led up to that flood. So where in the hell does it say that outside of Noah there was other people saved? But but save Noah, the eighth person, the preacher of righteousness, turning the uh, 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 bringing turning the uh, bringing in the flood upon the of the world upon the ungodly and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. All right, into ashes. So this ain't talking about no 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 angels who came down to the planet Earth. Okay, and, and ultimately had sex with regular women and created a demon race. This dude is out of his mind, man. I mean, he he's winging it. He's winging it. He he he's he's lost it, man. So you know that's that. I mean, it was more, but you know the the this this these mortal thoughts, this mortal flesh. I would have separated us. Sin, you know, rebellion has separated us from the glory, you know, that we're allotted. However, through Yahweh Shai, we have a way out of this flesh. All right. And what does it say in 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter? This corruption shall put on incorruption. Let's end it off with that. 1 Corinthians 15. Wow. This is 1 Corinthians 15 and 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. He was in the flesh and the Lord breathed the, left, the breath of life into him. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. <laughs> and that's Yahweh Shai. Okay. How be it. That which was uh, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural afterward, that which is spiritual. Let's put that in the NLT. One second here. It says. Verse 48, earthly people are like the earthly man and heavenly people are like the heavenly man. Just as we are now like the earthly man, we will someday be like the heavenly man. See that? What I am saying, dear brothers and sisters, is that our physical bodies, this flesh, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. <laughs> Let me reveal unto you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will be transformed. And see, when Yahweh was with him, he supped with him. He showed him all of these things, man. All right? We will all be transformed, and it will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever, and, and, and we who are living shall also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then our dying bodies have to be transformed into bodies that will never die. This scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Wow. So. That's it. That's the breakdown. You know. The, the the sons of God are going to finally get out of these damn chains of darkness. And it's going to happen on a great day of judgment, said man. So hopefully I'll edify it on to the next. Shalom.